If he can do above and beyond anything that you can ask or think, and you know the scriptures like I know scriptures, and you can quote some of them, not out of your head, but out of your heart. It says it's impossible to please him. Impossible to please him. But you must please him by faith. That's how you please him. Is by faith. That's what the Bible says. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it's, he's pleased in the prosperity of his servants and giveth the Father good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Sometimes you've got to realize you're not walking in cockiness. You're not walking in pride. You're not walking in arrogance. You're walking in true humility saying, God, you want to bless me. You want to empower me to prosper. This is what makes you happy. You take joy and pleasure in the prosperity of your people. Then therefore, I'm just trying to do everything I can do to please you. And so you just go on and bless me beyond what I can ask or think because nothing's too hard. You can take a silver coin out of a fish's mouth. You can b give a boatload of fish and, and, and multiply things. Well, 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 what I, show me somewhere in the scripture after the resurrection where Jesus did it. I'll do it right now. The last place I'll take you in John chapter 21. I know I'm stretching somebody. Amen. I'm stretching you on the spirit, man. I'm stretching you. I'm stretching you. Listen, the, uh, Jesus had 12 disciples, not, not 5,000. Huh? He may have fed the 5,000, but he, he poured into the 12. He says, what are you saying? Well, if I got 12 of you that was able to grab this message and, and realize that God has never, never. The Bible says children of God should never be seen begging for bread. No, 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 no. Not the, not the children of the most high. They ought not be begging for bread. They ought to be able to have an abundance on their life. Now, you may not start there. But you can start there today. Start just growing yourself Amen. and trusting in God. Amen. It may be a hard thing that I'm preaching and a hard thing to reach out and grab a hold of. But it doesn't mean you can't hear it and then just start working it out. Amen. In John chapter 21, I'm going to begin in verse 1. This is after the resurrection. After the resurrection. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana and in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. Well, we'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. Here they are again, out there fishing, not getting anything. All night they're fishing, didn't get nothing. Sometimes you got to do it by God's power, not your power, Amen. by his might, by his spirit. Amen? Amen. So at dawn, in verse 4, standing on the beach is Jesus. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach with his, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellas, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did. And they caught a haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. They couldn't haul in the net. I'm sorry, they caught a haul. <laughs> a haul is not a fish. <laughs> but nevertheless, let me read it the way it says it. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciples, Jesus' love, said to Peter, uh, it's the Lord. When Simon, when Simon Peter had heard that, he puts on his tunic and jumps in the water and heads to shore. And in verse 8, the others stayed with a boat and pulled the load, loaded net to the shore. <laughs> they couldn't even get it in the boat. They had to pull it to shore. For they were only a, about 100 yards from shore. When they got there, what did they find in verse 9? Does anybody see what they found when they got there? Huh? When they got there, they found breakfast. That's the first men's breakfast right there. <laughs> when they got there, they found breakfast waiting on them. Fish cooking over a coal fire and some bread. Jesus says, bring some of the fish you just caught. Jesus said to Simon Peter, went uh, aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There was 153 large fish. They didn't get no minners. 
or you call them minnows. I don't know what you call them, minners, minnows? <laughs> they, they ain't no little brim. <laughs> ah, this some big fish. Why not just a little fish and keep them humble? <laughs> that old fashioned preaching, little tiny fish. They should have got some minnows, some bait. No. But see, this, this is showing the heart of God even after the resurrection. And Jesus said, none of the disciples dared ask, oh, okay, verse 12, now come and have some breakfast. Jesus said, none of the disciples dared ask him who you are. They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them and the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he was raised from the dead. Okay, you can close your Bibles and I'm going to wrap it up in this area. I feel like we had a good Sunday church service today. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm, you know, we're all in different areas of faith and stuff like this. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it because I got to get rid of some of the traditional thinking in order to be able to receive completely from the scripture. Not the fact that Jesus can give you a boatload of, of what you need, a wealth and cash, and he can do it in a second. He can do it overnight. That, that, that part is very important. That's, a, that's 153 large fish, not small fish. That's, they know how to turn that into money. They can eat them and turn it into money. The part that I want you to leave here with is realizing how the Son of the living God, God, the Son of God is standing on the shore cooking your breakfast. And you worked all night long. You worked so hard. And you didn't get anything. And then the master just yells out at you, cast the net on the right side for a catch. And they threw that net and could barely haul it in and couldn't even get it into the boat. They had to drag it to the shore. It was only 100 yards from the shore, so we went, they weren't out that far. But do you see the love? He fixed them breakfast. And he served them. What kind of image of Jesus are you holding in your head? Can you, can you balance that one out? That the lover of my soul wants to make sure that I'm fed, just like the 5,000? Give them something to eat. Take care of them. He's showing the will of the Father. And he's showing us that right now that Jesus is saying, look, don't you see by, beyond all the physical stuff? I'm here because I want to serve you. I take pleasure and delight in serving you. I'm cooking your breakfast. I'm cooking. You. There's fish already cooking. Not the fish you caught. There's fish already on the grill. Not bread that you had to mix up the flour and everything. I've already got it prepped. And it says to serve them. Jesus. I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords at the right hand of the Father with the scepter of righteousness. It's in his desire to want to serve. And some of us can be acting like spiritual beggars to the one who has abundance, that has a desire to give us all things godly. He wants to give us, he wants to bless us bountifully, and we find ourselves fighting against his bountiful blessings looking for crumbs when he is the children's bread. He's like, don't you get it? Don't you get it that I died for your health? I died for your healing. I took the stripes for the miracles, but I also became poor that you might become rich. Don't you realize it yet? I can make you wealthier and wiser. Don't you realize I broke the curse off the land? I broke the curse, generational curses off of your body. The word says it can be blessed unto a thousand generations. You start claiming your inheritance is coming from the Lord. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. That's what the Bible says. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. If any man, I'm trying to close in this, but listen to me. I'm quoting scripture to you. If any man has left house or land, mother or father, brother, sister or wife or children, if they've left for my name's sake, and for the gospel, that person shall receive a hundredfold in this life and eternal life to come. You're not asking for what he has not written that you can have. 
If you've given your heart to Jesus Christ and you've given your life to the Lord and you may have had to forsake some of your family in order to do that at a particular time, that happens, but you give your heart to the Lord, now you say the hundredfold. A hundredfold. Every seed I plant a hundredfold. I'm not being boastful. I'm not being cocky. It's impossible to please him, but by faith, I must believe that he is and that he's what? A rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I'm trying to stand in a wealthy place with God because he's pleased in the prosperity of his people and of his servant. And Jesus is in me. Therefore, I don't lack any good thing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It doesn't matter what it looks like today. I'm talking about what's coming in tomorrow and tonight. Huh? You leave here with an anointing on your life that if it becomes true that December there's a famine in the land, just tell it it don't belong in your house. You don't come nigh my dwelling. No lacks coming into my house. You're not allowed here, I'm sorry. Spirit of infirmity, sorry. Well, it's a generational curse. Nope, that, that's broken too. I got a blood transfusion, the blood of Jesus. I got new blood working in me. The blood of Jesus who sets me free from sickness, from disease, from infirmities. All right, let's bow our heads, saints. I'm telling you, God is a good God. He is a good God. From right where you're sitting right now, ponder in your heart where your relationship is with the Heavenly Father with where your relationship is. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you want to first of all start there. He's reaching out His hand to you. He stands at the door and knocks. Let Jesus into your life. He paid a heavy price to set you free, not just financially, but from sickness, from disease, from infirmities. He paid the price. Walk it out. Walk it out. Confess it. Speak it over your life. Let Jesus into your heart. Let him be the Lord of your life. Invite the Heavenly Father to rule and to reign over you. He's a wealthy and a healthy, a God of prosperity to bless you, to be a blessing in the earth. He never intended you to be a pauper and a beggar. You're a king and a priest, according to the Bible. The Bible says you're a joint heir with Jesus. Jesus isn't broke, neither are you. You're a joint heir with Jesus. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth. Well, there's health and healing. Everybody's healed in heaven. Let health and wealth of healing flow in your body. You walk this thing out. You and me walk this out together. And let's just see what God does to bring prosperity back into our lives. And if the thief be found, must return a sevenfold. I speak a fresh prosperity into you in the power of Jesus' name.